Bounty man owes his life on earth. Bless, we pray you, this plough. May the virgin soil it turns prove fruitful to our needs. May the seed we sow grow strong and firm. That our bodies may be sustained by its plenty. And our souls always reminded of the miracle of... Ruang? Amen. What is it? Oh, I'm sorry, brother. I was thinking of my past when I was the potter. It's been a year now. Found in the potter's field? Yes. But if burial in such a place was unlawful, it was at least reverent. Who would bury a body with such respect? Her, her hair, it's still so dark. Did not Brother Rual's wife have a mane of hair just as dark as this?
everything. But the test is to give up what I value most. God has called me. God has called you? We were married in the presence of God. Do you forget that? Does he? Can God be so cruel? You will be provided for. Like a widow? An old crone? A freak? I won't be provided for! She will not understand, brother. How can a man refuse God? He cannot. If he is sure it is God's voice calling, and not his own. I'm a plain man, brother. I'm a potter like you were once a soldier. God speaks to plain men as well as visionaries and saints. He spoke to you, and he speaks to me. Yes, but Canaris... If Canaris truly loved me, then she would accept God's will. Father, I am aware of the doubts harboured by Brother Cadfile and by Brother Pryor, but there is no question of Ruald's vocation, and there are many precedents. Why, the great Earl who founded this very house left his lady and put on the habit before he died. But only three days before he died, and he had his wife's consent. Ruald is free, he can choose another way. But while he is alive, the wife he abandons isn't free to choose another husband. Mm. And it must be said, Brother Jerome Ruald is no great earl. He is a potter. Do you not think, Father, that entry within these walls is a grace beyond? What do you mean, beyond a potter's worth? Forgive me, Brother Pryor, but I'm sure that you have not forgotten St. Iltud. He had a wife and was asked by an angel do to leave... Do not quote the saints at me, Brother. But it is a holy precedent, and one which puts our duty to women in its proper light. Ruald is a good and honest man. And his chosen path is painful to him, a true sacrifice. He will be an asset to our house. See to it. I will, my lord. Brother Catfile, welcome. Brother Catfile. As a fine horse, a real warrior. Yes, <laughs> destined for the farm, not the battlefield. <laughs> My son would be a soldier. Oh, as his father. Was, but no more. And a soldier, not a fool. Have you not heard the news? No, I haven't. While King Stephen's wasting time in London, the rebels are gaining more and more land. Which they will lose again. The war goes round and round, and every death is pointless. They're destroying everything in their path. Monasteries as well as castles. Nothing north of the Thames is safe. I will not kill again, for any cause. Someone must make a stand. I won't. And you won't listen. Until Stephen brings a whole army north, any stand against the rebels will mean certain death. God save us from the young, eh, brother? Hell oh, from killing and futile heroics, certainly. Now I must see your wife. I have a new medicine, which I think may help her. I'm obliged, Brother Katva. It's little enough. Just a few moments without pain. The respite is most welcome. Uncomplaining, though I like to believe myself. She's a brave lady, your wife. She is indeed. There's no one more so. I must speak with your father. Sullivan, please, I have no one else to come to. Oh, my lord, you don't forgive me. Lady Astola, I come to ask, to beg your help. You must stop my husband from deserting me. Ruald is still fixed on becoming a monk. Yes. Look at the holy brother who advises him, who fills his head with piety and draws him from me. Generis, you know that is not true. Would he leave me if there were no RP in Shrewsbury? If you and your kind did not exist. What would you have me do? He is your tenant, my lord. But not my serf. I don't own him. And nor does the church. God owns him as God owns us all. But the church does not! Well enough! Disturb the Lady Astola. Out! Outside! Now! I beg your pardon, my lord. I, I truly beg your pardon. I am at my wit's end. You could speak to Roald, could you not, father? If he will not heed his wife, he will hardly be swayed by me. But what will become of Gennaris? How will she live and provide for herself? The monks will not see you starve. And for my part, the potter's cottage will be yours as long as you want it. Bread and shelter. 
think only of providing bread and shelter. What of my other needs? Roald is my husband. My man. Surely you can do more, Brother Kadva. The Abbot will listen to you. Gennaris mustn't be left. It is not my place to deny Roald his vocation. Now he's not acting on a whim, you know. You searched his heart. Now there's an end to it. Then that end is a sin, brother. Up here by the door, Colonel. Will the cat by the herbalist? Yes, the three. Maidon, the answer to your prayers. Oh. <laughs> and uh, Fedra, purveyor of every pill, potion, lotion, and charm in the known world, and a few from the unknown world as well. Oh. Well, I don't use charms. Roots, then. Seeds, leaves, and flowers, saps and juices, I have them all. Yes, so have I. See here, see here. The most precious oil in the world, spikenard. The contents of this very bottle were used to anoint the Saviour's feet. Why, it's better than a relic. How can a holy man such as yourself not wish to have this on your shelf? Quite easily. Edith! You are down to earth, brother, and I like you for it. Let us deal in the realities of medicine. Gunnild! Gunnild! The realities of pain. Here is an essence, nay, a quintessence of the miraculous. The merest tincture brings relief. This is hemlock. It is indeed. I don't need it. And you shouldn't be so free in selling it. I only sell such wares to those who are careful. Careful? Your wares can kill. If you will not spare me your coin, brother, at least spare me your sermon. You want nothing? I don't think so. Then good day. Pills, portions, lotions from around the world. Come here, bring your children, your animals. We'll cure all their ailments. I must go now. Father Abbot gave a time. All this is yours to sell. Well, it's all yours. The money, too. I'm sorry, Canaris. Forgive me. God's will! It is not my doing. I am drawn and can no longer resist. I can't help myself. Do you think I would leave you? Leave our bed of my own free will? How can you believe that? Child, for pity's sake, go. Please! It is ended! Profane woman, you should rejoice that your life has been so touched by the will of God. You are unchristian! Gennaris, let me help you. <gasps> Cowards, all of you! Hiding behind your skirts. I should never desert you. <laughs> if I were your husband. Not even for God. Let me alone, Sulian. You're a boy! What use is a boy to me?
Please forgive my intrusion. I brought you some food and a little money. Thank you. I didn't mean to offend you by it. And I know it's not usual for the Lord of the Manor to come visiting. But I wanted you to know that I understand the full nature of your loss. My wife has been ill for many years. And that makes our life together. When I found the cottage empty, I was afraid she'd left us. I went to the Abbey. To humiliate myself. Brother Ruald has settled well, Cadfar. A model of humility. Obedience to the rule in every way. To have turned him from us would have been wrong. Quite wrong. Father, might I visit the potter's field? Why? Do you have news of Ruald's wife? Uh, no, 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 I don't. I, but uh, we always need pots and bowls, and I thought if she's still selling them. The weeks pass, and you worry about her. Yes, I do. As I do. Visit her, Cadfire. Take food and arms. Canaris! Canaris? Who's there? What do you want? Oh, it's an unholy brother. And I know you. Yes, I know you too. It's Peter, isn't it? Yeah, I treated you last winter when you were roosting in our barn. Mm, and much good you did me. A woman lives here. Where is she? The dark-haired one? She's gone. She's gone? Do you think I'd be here otherwise? I only get what other people leave. When did she go? Three days ago, four, five, just disappeared. The clodpoles who work the fields here say she went off with a lover. God speed and protect you, my son. And the king also. Thank you, Father. What is this? The king brings the battle to the rebels. But he hasn't had time to raise an army. Hey, why fight now? You said yourself it would be certain death. The king is the king. And he has summoned you personally? Holy Father, could I ask your further prayers for Lady Astola, who will be alone in my absence? Our son Sullian has already left us. Also to fight? No, to become a monk. He enters a Benedictine priory at Cambridge. Father, in thanks for your prayers, I hereby give to the Abbey the Potter's Field. Use it as you will.
that file? Did you see Rual's wife? No. She's disappeared. Did not Brother Rual's wife have a mane of hair just as dark as this? Brother Ruald? I cannot say it is Gennaris, but nor can I say it is not. You cannot say, nor you cannot admit. A woman? Yes. A woman, fully grown, in her prime. Mm-hmm. And about a year, you say? Yeah, about a year. Catfile, you know who this must be. No other woman disappeared from hereabouts a year ago. This is Gennaris, wife of Ruwald, who is now a monk. You many women have dark hair. There is no proof. There's no ornament, no jewellery, not even a ring. Gennaris wore a ring. There is nothing to name her. Nothing about these pitiful remains to show me who or how or why. There is this. Every town's man and woman will tell you, Catfile. These are made by Ruald. Or were. But that doesn't mean to say he killed her. Or anyone did. There's no sign of injury. There's no damage from a blow. There's no knife wound. Is it suicide, then? Did she bury herself as well with honor? Where is Ruald? He is praying. Let him be. Though she died in Abilan, Catfile, that does not make her death beyond the law. Nor the one who killed her. Hugh, please leave him a while. There are other possibilities to be considered. Brother Catfile, a pleasant surprise. But I didn't ask to see you. Nor should you need to ask. It's my fault. I've been remiss for far too long. But now that I am here... You do not like what you see. Well, you seem to be in such very great pain. If you hadn't touched a drop of the poppy juice I left you, why not? Are you still grieving so much for your poor husband that you neglect the care for yourself? He died bravely. And I've seen how you honor his passing, but there's no need for this. Do you suppose he would wish to see you suffering in this way? Oh, lady, your family is perverse. Your husband propels himself to a, a pointless death. Your son to a vocation for which no young man was ever less well suited. And now you yourself, you compound your suffering by enduring endless pain. Do you have news of Sulian? Sulian? I hear nothing of him. All the war, isolated as I am. Well, as I understand it, he's still settled with the brothers in Cambridge. As for the war, well, now the rebels are gaining ground. It's said that they control most of the Fen country. Is Cambridge itself threatened? Yes, it is.
Pray long and hard, Brother Ruald. Does your soul weigh heavy? Brother, the truth is clear. And God sees everything. Ease your soul. Confess. Brother Jerome, this is not the place. Now that the potter has had time to reflect, Father Abbot shall hear what he has to say. I intended her no harm. And yet you have caused her harm. Yes. Yes, I took the breath of life from her. Even if she lives, I did that. You hear, Father? He admits himself guilty of her murder. I took the breath of life from her, your very words? Do you now deny them? You do not understand. I condemned her the day I came here. She is dead and buried by your hand, brother. Do not compound your mortal sin with perjury. Prostrate yourself. Repent. How is Ruel to have killed his wife when he's been here with us in the Abbey all the time? Nobody has not. Not entirely, brother. For I have remembered a journey that he made back to his cottage and his wife, authorised by Father Abbot. That is so. Shortly after the day of his admission here. I accompanied him. Oh, I see. You suddenly remember that you were witness to a murder. Oh, direct your scorn at those who deserve it, Brother Cadfile. Ruald was accompanied to the field. And there he was left with a woman to make his peace with her. He was out of your sight. For half an hour. Long enough for him to have killed and indeed buried her. Oh, come on. Long enough, brother. Well, you base your accusation on the fact that you didn't see any crime committed. I merely seek to prove that the opportunity was not lacking. Enough. Your point is well made, Brother Jerome. Brother Cadfile, you will speak with Ruald. Establish what you can of his guilt or innocence. But, but, Father, the evidence is not conclusive. But it becomes damning. I shall be the judge of that. And when it seems so to me, Lord Beringar shall take Brother Ruald from us. Not before. dangerous times you're alone but a little better prepared for trouble where are you headed Shrewsbury well you're away yet you'll not make it on those feet I never saw such blisters but fear not rejuvenation is at hand for I am able to offer you the very last jar of my traveler's balm a felicitous mixture 
of comfrey, sanical, wintergreen and goose grease. Mixed in secret proportions, famous throughout the known world. Armies march on it, pilgrims praise God for it. Well, I've no money, but... The water is free, brother. I wish you well of it. And a safe journey. Why have you brought me here? Hmm? Try to find out the truth. How long were you married, Ruald? Ten years. Well, more she still lives. Were they happy years? They were. She was the best wife a man could have. She was faithful to you then? Oh, yes. Till I broke faith with her. After that, I don't know. How did you meet? I never knew. At a fair in Wales before I came here. She was very poor, and very pretty. I fell in love with her. Yes, but you didn't have any children. No. No, I believe that to be a sign. A sign in what way? It was a good marriage, brother, I'm sure you understand. Surely when God withholds the gift of children, it's because he's got other plans for us. It seems so plain to me that God had another path for me to follow. And once I'd entered the abbey, it was like I'd come home, despite everything that had gone before. But now... Ruald, did you murder your wife? No. Did you bury her out there in the field? No. But... But? What if I was lying to myself, brother? When I left Gennaris to her fate to follow my path, what if it was the devil that called me and not God? Come with me, brother. Wait, well, Canaris is dead. There's nothing to connect you with it. Where do you think I you're think going? Better discuss this inside. What? What's going, brother? He's here! He's here! here! What's to be done with a man who abandons his wife out of piety, then murders her? I did not kill my wife! Hand him over to the law! He's not hiding from the law! Lord Pennington loses with me! If you reach the Abbey Gates, the law will lose it. What's to be done with the potter? What shall we do with him? I did not kill Gennaris! You put your cross in her grave. Do you deny? It is your cross. It is my cross, yes. Yeah, but that doesn't prove me placed it there. Would a cutthroat lay a cross on his victim's breast? Would a tramp? Would a footpad? No! Would a pious man of God? No! Ruald's wife is not dead. Gennaris is alive. I've seen her. I met her on the road just two days ago. She gave me this ring to give to Ruald. He is innocent. Well, I see no cause to doubt him, Cutler. No. Well, you yourself recognize this ring as belonging to Gennaris. Yeah. And Sulian is an honest young man of good family. Oh, good family, yes. Of strange family, certainly. Look, if Gennaris is alive, then Ruald is proved innocent. That at least must please you. If Gennaris is alive, then who is dead? It galls me that I can find no clue, even to identity, let alone how she died or why. Well, perhaps there is no how or why. Only a natural death. 
people do die other than by murder, Catfile. And they're more likely to be buried reverently, as was our corpse, if their end is peaceful. Excuse me, Brother Catfile. What? We've taken Brother Suli into the infirmary to rest for a while. We well, can't rest too long. We have to leave as soon as possible. Should I apply more ointment to Brother Sulian's feet? Yes, yes, take what you need. You are to go back with Sulian. Oh, I must. Prior oh, Mortimer has great need of my medicines. What? No, 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 not mustard, boy. <laughs> you need betterly. Mustard is for boils. You're a braver man than I, Catfile, venturing into these rats' nests. Oh, God, rats aren't all bad. No, but they are all foul. There's the one I'm looking for. <laughs> Peter? Peter? Well, how is it with you? Oh, I breathed another year, unholy brother, no thanks to your charity. Well, I have a new preparation here, which might bring you relief. More lasting relief than this, at any rate. Is it as cheap? It's free. All I ask is that you cast your mind back a year. Do you remember I found you at that cottage? Hmm? Yeah? Across the river, a place called the Potter's Field. You told me that the woman who lived there had gone away. No, no, I told you that was gossip. I didn't see the going of her. Or did you see anyone else? Anyone in the field or at the cottage? Why? Because if you don't tell us, I'll burst your boils one by one with my dagger. Oh, they're spreading, these boils. Another few days, they'll cover your face. Yeah, they'll be all over your scalp. But if that's what you want, is it Christian to drive such a bargain? Was there someone at the cottage? Oh, of course there was. That's my fate. Never a roof to call my own, you? You have a roof, no doubt. Snug and warm. Just like the unholy brothers. Someone shared the cottage with you. <laughs> shared? With me? A hedge pig? No. What then? Kicked me out, of course. Who kicked you out? Peddler and his girl. <gasps> you call this relief? You torture me! Can you describe him, the peddler? Vicious. Vicious and as sharp as a weasel. His looks. Brown haired. Short. Slim. But above all. Vicious. It's a peddler of what? Potions, charms, and no doubt balms such as yours that burn like hell fire. I've met this man. His name's Baden. His girl got worse than I did by the sound of it. What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, I slept close by that night, hoping they'd move on the next day. And in the night, such screams from that cottage, they woke me. A girl's voice. In fear of her life, it sounded. I kept well away. And the next day, what then? The place was empty when I dared look. You didn't see the peddler leave? Did you see the girl leave? Come on, think, man! Do I get to keep the hellfire? I've seen him since. On the road. Though I make sure he doesn't see me. Yes, and what about the girl? Didn't see her leave, haven't seen her since. Clearly... <laughs> She ran away. What was she like? I, I only caught a glimpse of her. Did she have dark hair? Dark hair? Dark eyes? I'll find the peddler. You get about your errand of mercy. Out! All of you! Back to your duties. This room is for respite, not idle comfort. Brother Rual, you, you may stay a little longer. The evenings are cold. Thank you, Brother Pryor. Unfortunate business. The townsfolk. 
Simple, ignorant people easily led into error. Some people who are less ignorant made the same accusation. Assumption, not accusation. But we, we are sorry, nonetheless. You must understand the very heavy responsibility that bears upon my shoulders, Brother Wilde, for the spiritual well-being of this house. It is my constant duty to test and question. True vocations are rare. I did doubt myself as much as you doubted me. Now that I know that Canaris is alive and well, my path is clear. It was God calling me. My future is here. I visited your mother shortly after your father's body was brought back from the war. I wanted to tell her about uh, what we found in the potter's field, but I couldn't. She looked so frail. I was afraid that another shock might prove too much for her. Did you find her greatly awful when you came back from the father's funeral? Grief and pain are a heavy burden. Oh, indeed. She's had many shocks lately, not least your sudden and unexpected calling to God. I must admit, uh, I was shocked and intrigued by that myself. Won't you leave your vocation, even for a little while, to look after your mother? No. You do know that she refuses all relief from pain. She loved my father dearly. Is it so strange to dull one pain with another? Brother. For murder, is it? And on your say so! I'm not wanted on my say so, but on you, Beringers! Beringer, it's you who tells him about the That's well known! I said that's enough! He think would have killed you, brother! Yes, but he hasn't. Come on, that's enough. But a woman's body has been found in the potter's field. Where it's lain for a year. Yes, I've heard the gossip. Yes, and were you there a year ago? I was indeed, brother. And with my dark-haired girl. What of it? You're no fool. It's plain enough. Is it? If I've made a corpse of her, then surely she must be dead. Gone held! And as you can see, she's very much alive. Here. Feel. Speak, Gunnhild. What shall I say? Why, that you are well and happy. I am well and happy. She disappears now and then, but I always find her. For the truth is, she needs me. I feed her and I protect her. Do I not, Gunnhild? Yes. You must find another name for your corpse, brother. Baden's dark-haired girl will not fit. I cannot live like this. My mother lives close by. If you can escape, she'll feed and protect you. Gunnhild! Go to Blount Manor when you can. Tell them I sent you. My name's Sulian. Does this mean we're close? Yes, we are close. Don't you find it strange, Sulian? We now know that the peddler's girl is alive and well. So, by your word, is Ganeris. What of it? Well, it means that uh, the ploughed-up corpse belongs to yet another dark-haired woman. Isn't that an extraordinary coincidence? That draws three raven-haired heads to the same small field? Come on. Father Pryor? Father? Help me raise him. Get the water. Now I'll need a fire. But we may be seen. Well, we'll have to risk it. I can't move him yet. He's far too weak. Brother Sulian is keeping watch? Yes. 
I trust him. He has a soldier's blood in his veins. I'm glad of it. He saved my life, you know. No, he didn't say. Not in so many words, but I'm not surprised. May I speak plainly? Mm -hmm. I was surprised when he chose the monastic life. Well, he's a young man with fierce emotions and therefore finds difficulty in moulding himself to our rule. So you too had your doubts about him? Oh, indeed. But that's what the novitiate is for. Doubt. If it then becomes plain that a novice is more suited to be a soldier or a husband, so be it. But let him learn that for himself and return whence he came and no harm done. Has it become plain then with Sulian? Why such interest? Have you ever seen that? I have, yes. In Sulian's possession? He hides it, thinks it a secret. But there are no secrets from me. And the prior. Oh, he's indestructible. He survived even my ministerings. But he needs his rest now. Ah, so it's you, brother. And Father Avalt wants an account for your adventure. Which he shall have. Shortly. Ah. Sit yourself down. Rest a while. So this is your workshop, where you concoct all your potions and balms. <laughs> yes, indeed it is. There. Thank you. It's also where I ponder and puzzle. You know, something is puzzling me now, Sulian. This ring, the one you gave Ruald as proof that his wife is still alive. Yes. Yes. You said that... Gandelis gave it to you when you met her on the road on your way here to the Abbey. Yes. Mm. That was a lie, wasn't it? You've had this ring for six months. You've been wearing it underneath your habit. Prior Mortimer confirmed it to me. Well, why did you lie? Was it to help Rual? Were you protecting him in some way? Rual is innocent. How do you know? It is Ganeris who died, isn't it? So, if Ruald is innocent, but Ganeris is dead, who killed her? Your silence helps no one, Sulian, because I think no one is going to hang for this crime. Tell me the truth about the ring. Gennaris gave me this ring. She did not give it to you, Solium. You've had it for six months. Gennaris died a year ago. Your father rode off to war a year ago. You ran off to be a monk a year ago. So how have you had this ring for six months? Because six months ago your father was brought home dead from the war. You recognised it among his effects. You removed it. After the funeral you took it back to Cambridge with you to spare your mother the pain of the truth. What truth? That her husband, your father, had taken Ganeris as his mistress and then killed her. Eudo murdered Ganeris? Yes. Well, is it so strange that he should be drawn to her and they should become lovers? No. But then to kill her? Why? Well, perhaps because she refused to remain quiet. An accident, even. But I'm sure Udo caused her death. Then he buried her and rode to war. Exactly. Taking a secret with him to his own grave. And Sulian? Well, Sulian witnessed what happened. Or he already knew the truth. He says so. No, he says nothing. But his silence speaks loudly. And that is your proof. You've gone mad, Catfile. In your desperation, you accuse the dead. 
as others accuse Ruel. Well, what would you prefer? That the grave should not have been disturbed? Daenerys was deserted once. We cannot now desert her again. Got you go and talk to the boy. Sirin. Brother Cadfile tells me that he has solved the mystery of the ring, and therefore of the potter's field. I have some information of great import. Will the day ever dawn when you haven't? If this boy has been questioned on the matter of the woman's body, then it is highly pertinent. A year ago, when the woman, Gennaris, entered into the abbey gates and was removed... By you, Brother Jerome. By me. He was waiting for her, with words of comfort. Words which she rejected, brutally. And it was his look of hurt and anger as she left him that I have been unable to forget, and which I see before me now. His eyes burned. Now, I know nothing of the ways of the world, of course, but surely it is clear. Sullion followed and struck the woman down in a rage of humiliation, and then took holy orders as a means of escape. Or perhaps penance. For, as the rescue of Ruel shows, there is some good even in the worst of us. Suin? Brother Jerome is right. I loved Gennaris with a passion that she just laughed at. She dismissed me as a child. But I'm no child. So I killed her and buried her body in the potter's field. So, Catfire? If it isn't you, go, it cannot be Suin. Just because Jerome says it is. Brother, I believed Sullian, but if as they say, he only lied to save me. Then Gennaris is dead. If she is dead, it is not your doing. You were drawn from her by God. I know some who have caused such pain for far less exalted reasons. But I must tell you that Sulian has now confessed to the killing. He says he killed her because he loved her. And not as a son loves, but as a man loves a woman that he can't have. No! Sulaim would never hurt her. When he was a boy and Lady Astella's pain became too much for him, he would come to us for comfort. Gennaris was like a mother to him. Well, in that case, if he's not to hang for a crime that he did not commit, you must help me. I have searched that cottage stone by stone, and it has told me nothing. But you see, they have... That's strange in itself. Surely there must be something there. I've missed it. Something that would name a murder? Yes. There is one thing that might show if Gennaris left of her own free will or was murdered. Oh, God, that she left. Something I have missed, then. Our savings. If she left alone or, or with a lover, then surely she would have taken them. If she was murdered, they would still be there. Where? In our secret place. No one would ever find it unless I, I told them. Twice a day, you won't regret it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wait. 
Brother Cadfael, no cowled lunatic with you this morning. Do you recognise this? A glass vial, brother. I'm surprised you cannot name it yourself. You sell vials like these. Not as many as I'd like. You tried to sell me hemlock like this a year ago. How many of these have you sold since? <laughs> How many? One. To whom? I need to speak to him. Well, you have your wish then. Hmm? To be treated like a guilty man, locked up. Those, I take it, were your clothes. Well, if I'm to be hanged, I'd rather not disgrace the Benedictine order. What about your family? I have confessed. There is no need for a trial or public knowledge, and no need to cause my mother any further pain. Lord Berengar will grant my request and dispose of me now, then she and the world will think I've disappeared back into the cloister forever. Tell me the truth about the ring. It's as you say. I took it from my father's things. Not to spare my mother as a keepsake for myself. Because you loved the Gennaris? Yes. But you didn't kill her? Yes, I killed her. Did your father know about your crime? Hmm? Was he a witness to it? Did you confess it to him? No. No, but well, he must have done. Otherwise, why the double sacrifice, yours and his? If shame didn't lead him to his death, what did? And why give away the potter's field? How did you kill her? I, I, I stabbed her through the heart. There was, there was a knife at the cottage on the table. No. She wasn't stabbed. And I'm a fool, Sillian. I thought of the peddler only in terms of his dark-haired girl. I forgot what he was selling. I'll get your clothes. Mother. Sulian. Sulian. Oh. Are you well? Yes, Mother. Brother Cadfire. Forgive us, lady. We must speak with you. Are you still taking nothing to ease your pain? I've decided to accept what suffering God offers me. And I, in my turn, offer it to God until my time comes. My expiation for a sinful life. Well, I admire your courage. I myself have grave doubts on the doctrine of suffering. Your doubts are not mine. When I visited you recently, I had news. Which, in the end, I didn't tell you. But now I have to tell you. A body has been found. It's the body of a woman. Ploughed up, quite by chance, in a corner of the potter's field. I believe the body to be that of Gennaris, the potter's wife. Your son has confessed to her murder. Mm, he says he stabbed her, but I don't believe she was stabbed. I think she was poisoned. And poison is not a weapon of rage, of impulse. Poison is thoughtful. Poison is premeditated. And it requires no physical strength. Do you recognize this ring? I have seen it. Might I ask you where? On the hand of Gennaris. Do you think it possible that she might have given it away to someone else? If you mean my husband, speak plain. You're here to c confront a jealous wife. A murderess. The peddler sold you this, didn't he? He did. Hmm. Oh, hush, boy. Hear the truth. Oh, I wish to God I had used this differently. 
You have taken my husband as your lover. You are mistaken, lady. He took me. I didn't steal him from you. What has happened between us happened honestly. I didn't seduce him. I hope you've given him some comfort, though. And he, you, since Ruel turned his back on the world. I haven't come here to fight or to apportion blame. My body's no longer of use to me. It is certainly of no use to my husband. He still cares for you. Care? Care is for infants and old women. Udo has shared my bed these 20 years. I cannot now share him. I will not. I think you understand. Yes. I would feel the same way, but he and I, we have our needs, our loneliness. It is beyond bearing. It is not so simple. Even if I were to remain silent, willingly blind, things could not continue as they are. Udo is a man of conscience. His passion would dilute in guilt. He would be torn, unhappy. Your love blighted as my body is. I believe you to be a woman of strength, as well as passion. How strong is your resolve? You need. Your courage. What is this? Hemlock. Oh, Gennaris, you cannot have him while I live. I cannot share him. It must be resolved. Let one of us be liberated by death. Do you dare risk all? I risk nothing. Only my life, or what God and the church has left me of it.
Nice to know what's wrong. <laughs> this... This is wrong. I don't blame you for what you've done, Udo. And you mustn't blame me. You are unfaithful to me. But it's over. I have made a wager. And I have lost! <laughs> Go to Gennaris. Go. Go! Self-sacrifice does you credit, Sulian. But your father didn't kill Ganeris. Only buried her with compassion and with dignity. Which was my wish as well as his. She was a woman wronged. Doubly wronged if she were to be condemned as a suicide. And thus denied burial in consecrated ground. By the church that had already taken her husband from her. So if she were buried unshriven, at least she was not buried unloved. And she would still rest in peace now. If our plowman hadn't turned too close to the trees. Yudo should never have given away the field. But he could no longer bear to own it. He was never one to think ahead. And now I, who should have been the one to die, am the only one who lives. And I honor Ganeris in the only way I can. With my pain. Thank you for petitioning the abbot. I shall never know how Ganeris died. It is a comfort to know that she will have a proper resting place. Well, a corner of our cemetery seems little enough. <laughs> you have chosen your path. You must not flinch from it now. A leaving is a beginning, not just an end. Listen, I know that you have seen yourself in me. I, too, once left a woman who loved me. Not a wife, a mistress. And forty years ago now. But I was not drawn by God. I was drawn by adventure, and I promised to return. I did not. 
to keep that promise. So feelings of regret, of guilt, are in all of us. It's something that we have to live with. Oh, 